Welcome back to part two of Home Studio's Python for Beginners average test score series. And we're going to start this from scratch and use an input and then also use a counter to kind of tally up our scores and our possible points. And at the end, we might throw a for loop in there just so we don't have to do a lot of copying and pasting. Now, in our previous sample, one of the things we wanted to avoid was having to change all these variable names, test one, test two, test three. Every time we make a new test, we're going to have to change the name. We're going to have to change test over here. We're going to have to add all these things up and make sure we get the right variables. We're going to have to change this. So we're going to try to be a little more efficient. So with this one, and I have it started, I said start from scratch, but we're, we have it started a little bit. I copied and pasted these. And I'm using these two inputs here, and we're just saying enter test score. We're not going to put a number here yet. And we're just using a general test score and a general POS points. We're not going to call this test score one because we're going to try and tally up those as we go based on how many we have. Now, this may change. I have my print statement here. Now, we don't have the variable declared for this yet or for that, but we will. And one of the things we're going to do is set up some counters. And counters are basically just a variable that's going to increment each time. We can add one to it. We can add something else to it. And what we're going to do is add test score to a kind of a total that's going to be kind of tallying up everything. And also for variables, to, to keep it consistent, I'm going to call one test score and then just do underscore total. Now, that may not be the shortest variable name, but at least it's, it's going to be easy to see that this one's the total and this one's just a test score. And we'll do the same thing with pos points. So we don't kind of make up a whole bunch of names that are that get us confused after a while. So I'm going to have another one called pos points, but with underscore total. So it's very clear that these are the totals. And then we'll use those to get the final grade. I could even go here and I'll create a little area with a comment called calcs. And I'll just say grade. I'll make a variable called grade. And I'll set it to the variable of test score total and then divide it by the POS points total. And what we'll do is we'll increment these every time we enter a score, we'll increment those. And how do we do that? Well, we just have to add test score to the total. So what we could do here, and we can also keep track of the tests too, even for this part here. So I'll put this in here. I'll say tests, and I'll just set it to zero because we don't have any to start. And then we're going to add a test each time we do one. So, and this one here, we'll start these all at zero for now because they're all kind of starting off. Every counter is going to start at zero. We don't have a total points yet. We don't have a total score yet. We don't have any tests yet. But when we do, after someone enters their data here, then we're going to add to that. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do test score total. And I'm going to set that to test score total again. And I'm going to add test score to it. So what's going to happen here is every time we enter a test score, it's going to say test score total, which is zero. It's going to say, okay, make that zero plus whatever the test score is. And then the next time we do it, the test score will be whatever the, the total is. So let's say it was nine. The next time it's going to say nine and add that up. So let's, now let's do the same thing with the points. And just to save time here of typing, I'll paste this in here. And that's going to do the same thing. That's going to equal pos points total plus pos points. And that'll keep track of it each time we do this. After here, we can also say tests equals tests plus one. Now, there's ways we could shorten this. When you're adding something to yourself, you could do something where you can put plus equals. I could really do plus equals one, and that's kind of a shortcut for what we're doing. But until we understand what we're doing yet, let's just say equals tests plus one. There's no reason to shorten that yet until we know what we're doing. So this is what's happening here. So we're, we're kind of tallying that up. And the idea is if we copy and paste this multiple times, it's going to add it up and kind of put it all together each time. And we don't have to change any of the variables when we do this. So we have tests here. So it should put the total number of tests at the end. We have our grade here. Now let's just try it out. Let's just, let's make two of them and just see what happens. So I'm going to copy this. And we'll just try out two tests here. We'll do like a, a 9 and an 8, and it should come out to like 85. So we have two tests here. So let's try it out, and I'm going to run it. And test score 1, I'll put a 9 out of 10. And then the second one, I'll put an 8 out of 10. And it comes out to 0.85, which is right. We just have to fix this. And it says two tests. So this is actually working. Other than this, now we can... We can reassign this, or we could put it all together. I'm just going to reassign the variable. So I'm just going to say grade equals 
we'll just say grade equals grade times 100. That'll change the decimal. And while we're at it, we can even round it if we want. That'll round it up to a higher value if it's 0.5 or higher. So we can put round with parentheses around that. And that basically reassigns grade. So now grade after doing that calculation is just going to make sure it does that. So backspace here to have just one space in between. And we'll try it out. And again, I'll just try 9 out of 10, and then 8 out of 10. And average grade of two tests is 85%. So that's working. So this is helping. It's a little more efficient, except copying and pasting isn't efficient. And we'll find a way to fix that. But one thing at a time here. Now, another thing we could do, since we're adding just enter test score, enter test score, it's hard to keep track. Now, one thing we could do is make another variable and call it test num and keep track of that and set it at one so that it starts at one. Now, what, what we could do with test num is do a little f string in here. We have to put that little f before the quote and test score right after test. What I'm going to do is just put curly brackets and put test num. And what it'll do is it'll just kind of insert one in there the first time. And then the second time, if we increment it, which we would do just like this, we would do it the same way. We would take this one and say test num equals test num plus one. So that way it's going to add up the test nums. Each time it'll put a new test num in here. Now, since we copied and pasted this, I'm just going to wipe this whole thing out because I don't want to keep changing everything. And that's the, that's the idea that we don't want to do that. But for now, we're going to try that out. And let's try it three times. There's a second one. And I'll paste it a third time. So we have three of these where we have this block of code repeating. And nothing's changing. They're all exactly the same. So even if you are copying and pasting, it's not that big of a deal because you could just wipe them out and paste them in again. Although it's not what we want to do eventually. But for now, we'll see if this works. So we'll run this again and we'll enter test score. Now, I didn't put spaces in here, which would be helpful too. But I'll just try a 9 and I'll put an out of 10 and I'll put an 8 out of 10 and I'll put a 7 out of 10. And I get an average grade of three tests is 80%. And that's right. With a 9, 8, and a 7 out of 10, that should be 80%. So that's working. And this is keeping track of things with this little test num thing here. So just by using these counters, we're kind of able to make things a little more, a little more efficient. Now, copying and pasting isn't the best thing for efficiency because if we have to change one thing in here, we'd have to delete these and get rid of them. But let me show you one last thing here that is kind of kind of getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because we're not going to talk about loops yet. But just to show how efficient a loop can be, we can do something like this. We could say for i in range, and this is called a for loop, and in parentheses, how many tests you want to do. And notice when I hit return, it indented. And we're going to indent all of these. So I'm going to highlight these and just hit my tab key. And we're going to indent these. These are like curly brackets in JavaScript. But in this loop here, I'm going to run it four times. And what's going to happen is we're going to run the test four times. Now, while I'm doing this, while I'm doing something that can run four times, that can repeat that code four times, I'm even going to put a print function in here. So it puts some space in between it as well. And I do have space in here with my, with my output statement. So let's see how this works. I'm just going to start this over. And I'll run it. And now it's saying enter test one score. And I'll do nine out of 10. And now just notice it's putting the spaces because of that print function. And I'll do nine out of 10. And then I'll do eight out of 10. And then I'll try seven out of 10. And let's see what happens. It comes out to 82%. It says average grade of four tests is 82%. So it's keeping track of things. And now we only have to change variables up here and here. And if we wanted to put in 10 tests, all that we would have to do is change that number. So for loops are going to make things really efficient. Now we're also going to start working with functions too. But for now, I just wanted to show you how this can be more efficient from where we started, which is kind of adding things up and repeating things over and over. Counters are very efficient to be used to kind of add points. And for loops are also very efficient because they could take a whole block of code and repeat it a number of times. We'll even use that with turtles and some other exercises. So that's grades using counters. 
and we'll be doing more of that. We'll be reinforcing this as we go, but that's just a little introduction using our average test score calculator.